All right, this is Nick Cosper with Animated Illumination. Uh, I showed a, uh, a little video on my setup for my garage door matrices. Um, as far as the hardware, the projectors, uh, how I set up the coroplast, all of that good stuff uh, in another video. And I had several questions about how to set that up on the software side. So I'm going to show you how to set that up, um, how to set up some um, the groups, the models, uh, and then also how to set those up in Falcon Pi Player uh, so that it's pretty easy overall to get it all done and make it all work. Um, but if you've never done it before, it's probably a little bit overwhelming. So in X Lights, I've got this open here, and um, I set out in controllers. I set up a controller, um, and I set it to a null protocol um, with its own ID, and then I set up the number of channels um, that you're going to need. So uh, it will after you, you could set this up later or you can calculate out the number of channels it's basically the the height by the width times three um, for each color the rgb um, so height times width is the number of virtual pixels um, that will be in the model and then there's three channels for each color um, for um, to to get your number of channels that are calculated here so I set that up, I call it garage right. We'll refer to that here in a second. Um, so within the layout tab, this will show you where these, uh, where these are. So within my setup, um, you've got three different virtual matrices. Um, they are here, those are the three. Um, I start off with this one I call garage projector right. Um, so the setup on this is really pretty simple. Um, it's set up as a horizontal matrix. Um, you add this, I should say before I do that, since I already have it added, to create a new matrix, you use this model, um, and you just drag it out, position it. Mine's all 3D, so it would take a while to position it. That's why I'm not setting up anything new, just showing you what I already have. Um, so horizontal direction, as far as the matrix goes. Um, so my height is the number of strings. So there's 200 strings. Um, width is 320. So the projectors that I have, they're not high def projectors. Um, they, uh, I think they show 480 uh, P or I think that's the definition that uh, they're set up to, to shoot or to project. Um, they could show up to 400 by 640. Uh, rather than using all of those, if I were to use those, it would drastically change the number of channels. I already have plenty. There's nearly 2 million for these three um, models, if I were to add this, you know, it's going to increase that by so much that it would be nearly impossible for X lights to render, at least on the computer that I have. I have a pretty powerful computer, so that really is the word of warning to anybody that's going to set these up. The more definition that you put on your display within these virtual matrices, uh, the longer render times you're going to have. So I've got a Mac Pro with um, 12 core, 128 gigabytes of RAM. So my computer is pretty powerful, um, and it will still take me, you know, sometimes two, sometimes 20 minutes, depending upon what I've got displayed um, across a lot of the model groups and on these projectors, um, just because of the number of channels. So I decided on this, I'm just going to have you know, half of the resolution that I could have. Uh, so that's 200 by 320. When you are an audience member looking at my show, um, pretty much everybody is across the street. So you can kind of see how it's laid out. I have a street that goes up a hill and across. So people can park on both sides all the way up the hill. So pretty much everybody that's sitting and viewing is at least on the other side of the street. I don't have anybody up too close here. I don't. It's cold where I live, so I don't have too many people that stand and watch. So the definition, that 200 by 320 is plenty um, for you to display video. It all looks great um, whenever uh, I have anything displayed on those matrices from the typical vantage point from the audience members. So other settings on this. Um, I mentioned I would refer back to the controller name. So when I set this up, I set it up to start uh, the beginning of this model at the beginning start channel at the beginning of controller garage right. So that's what I have set up in the controllers tab. That's what that refers to. Uh, everything else on this is set up with just the default settings for matrix. 
Um, the bottom left is the start location for where I have that set up. That will correspond to what I put in the Falcon Pi player for the virtual matrix. Uh, but that's where that's set up. So after that, I have two more basically copies of that model. They just have different start channels. So this starts at the end of this model. And then this one, I don't know why I did it, but I set it up with an individual start channel. Um, and uh, I could have had it in at or begin at the end of this model. I just set it up for that for whatever reason. It uh, doesn't really matter which way you do it. It'll all display the same. So in order to get these, so right now I've got three separate models. In order to get them to actually be usable, at least these two, um, they need to be in a model group. So if I were to try and add an effect to these, I'm only going to get it on half the garage door, or one out of the three. Uh, so if you right click and add, uh, add an empty group, or you could select two out of those three or all three of those uh, models uh, and create a group. Um, but if you were to add an empty group, I'm not going to do that since I already have one created. So I've named mine garage projectors combined. And then I also have another one called garage projectors, all three combined. So this is just the main garage door, my two car garage door. Um, I've added the two models in that group. Um, you have to order them. You'll have to play around with this, but you're going to order them from right to left as far as the model groups go. The important part when you set these up is that you set these up with the default layout mode. The default layout mode when you set up a group is minimal grid. If you set that up with minimal grid, it's going to look absolutely terrible. Um, so basically that sets that up for just, I think it's like a 400 by 400 grid um, and it's spread across the width of your display or something to that effect. And it looks absolutely terrible on something like what we're setting up. So what you want to have set up is you want to have horizontal stack scaled. You don't want horizontal stack that will mirror the two images and every effect you apply to it will be uh, one on the left, one on the right. But if it's horizontal stack scaled, um, it will pretend basically as if these two matrices um, left to right are one model. So then I've also added, I don't use this very often, but I've also added to where all three of them are combined uh, into one model or one model group. So when I apply effect, it goes to all three of the garage doors. So then within the sequencer to uh, apply a model to it, obviously you're just going to add those model groups. Let's see, I normally have this spread out across four monitors, so my display is not, or my uh, layout and x slides isn't really set up for one display. Um, let's see, let me pull over model preview so we can see that. Let's just throw that in here. All right, so I've got model preview. So if we were to just apply, you know, any effect here, um, let's just So one word of caution whenever you're going to uh, add pretty much any effect or anything to these, if you don't have a powerful enough computer, your render times are going to be really long. Um, so, you know, the more intricate, the more layers, the more you use certain effects like shockwave or the fan effect, the longer your render times are, especially if you layer those or have the masks. Um, so, the more channels, you know, it's just going to create longer render times. But um, as you can see, this is the double garage door. You know, I just apply an effect to that. Um, I don't even know where my effect window went, but uh, let's change that to something else that looks a little better. Not there. Here we go. So as you can see, it's treating both of those garage doors. If you look really closely, I have those lined up just about perfectly within the layout. Um, but if you look really closely, you can kind of see where they start to overlap. Um, and, and that's where those two garage doors meet. And so uh, lining those up outside is obviously important. Um, but you'd be surprised, even if it's not absolutely perfect, you know, it, it's not terribly noticeable unless it's pretty bad. Um, 
if I take that and now I can apply that same effect to uh, all three garage doors and it just acts as if, you know, it's one large wide matrix. So that's the setup as far as X lights goes. So as you can see, it's pretty simple to set that up. Um, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to show you how to set that up in Falcon Pi Player. So I've got this set up to where the beginning of the three of these matrices as far as channels go is on a garage projector right. So I'm going to pull over uh, my Falcon Pi Player page. All right, so I have this set up as a remote. I have my master uh, is set up here. Um, so this is my FPP main. Uh, I have these set up on a different subnet, so I don't have any uh, issues as far as you know channels or, or as far as flooding or anything like that. I don't have multi-sync ups or setups, so that's no big deal. But uh, here, there's my main, I'll get that out of the way. So garage projector, right? To set up that virtual matrix, you go to input output, you go to channel outputs in the others tab you will go to add and you will add a virtual matrix so i've got that set up already so i'm not going to do anything with it um, but uh, start channel that's going to refer back to your start channel 341199 uh, so that's where your start channel is going to come from your channel count um, is going to be determined by the width and the height. So because it's the horizontal matrix, they kind of flip-flop. Um, so you put 200 by 320, and uh, it's the opposite in here. But obviously, your width is going to be greater than your height uh, on pretty much any display. Um, color order, um, I've got port set up here, and scaling is hardware. So those are pretty much just all default settings. So once that's saved, you're pretty much good to go as far as the Falcon Pi player goes in a virtual matrix. You really don't need any other settings unless you are going to set this up to, uh, you know, have a have X lights actually send the data to it. Um, then for testing purposes or something like that, you could set up the input, um, but uh, you would it would require some different settings. Um, then as long as it's in remote, you're good to go there. And then back to your main Falcon controller, your master, um, then once you have that one set up, you set these up. Um, so I got gar garage projector right, you make sure it's set up so that it multi-syncs to it, and then you're good to go. Whatever you play on there will play on the remote and will display as a virtual matrix. Um, you can also use uh, the um, FPP Connect to send over your sequences once you save them and then you can save it all at one time to your master and your remotes. So it's finding all of my FPP instances. As you can see, I've got quite a few of them, a few more of them when Halloween time is around, but uh, that's that. That should get you on your way to setting up a garage virtual matrix. You know, if you do those few things along with uh, the other video and setting up the hardware, and the projectors, um, you can have a pretty awesome projected virtual matrix display on your garage doors. That should be it.